Okay, hello and welcome to my shop. This is going to be a video on how you can build your own capacitor tester, specifically making a leakage tester to check a capacitor for leakage out of circuit. Over here is my Knight RC tester. This is a commercially built um, capacitor tester and you, some people probably want one of these but you don't have one and you're probably wondering well how do you check a capacitor for leakage if you don't have one of these testers? I'm going to show you how to build one. Some of you might be thinking, well, why bother testing a capacitor for leakage? You know the old capacitors are bad anyway, just replace them. Well, that's true, but having a leakage tester definitely comes in handy if, for say, you have a new capacitor that might be faulty, or you just, for the entertainment value, want to check your old capacitors and just see how bad they really were. It can give you an idea of any other capacitors that might be re remaining in the set whether it be a radio, television, amplifier, whatever, that have to be replaced. So we're going to start out with the Knight RC tester. I have two capacitors here. I have a yellow one, which is a brand new capacitor, 630 volt rated. And I have an old wax paper capacitor, which is from the 1940s. We're going to start out by checking both capacitors on this machine. So I just have two leads connected. So all we do is we just connect the capacitor across the uh, tester. So we're going to start with the new capacitor and we're going to see how much leakage it has. So the way this works is this machine puts varying DC voltages on the capacitor ranging from 50 volts all the way up to 450 volts changed by the selector switch and it uses a magic eye indicator tube to measure the give you a visual indicator of the leakage through the capacitor. On a good capacitor, when you throw the switch over to leakage, the eye should briefly close and then open right back up, indicating the capacitor has charged and then gone back to normal. When you let go of the switch, the eye should close again while the capacitor discharges and then go back to normal. So let's check this capacitor at 50 volts. Watch the eye tube. Well, let's, let's zoom in on the eye tube so you can see it here. That might be a good idea. Hope you can see the shadow on that eye tube. So we're going to go ahead and throw the switch. And right like just like that, we'll go up to 450. See, it, it opens right back up. So we're going to go back to 50 volts. And now to compare that, we're going to hook up the old capacitor, which I presume to be leaking on this tester. So I'm hooking up the leads to it. Okay, the old capacitor is hooked up. Let's check it for leakage at 50 volts. Mind you, this capacitor is rated for 400 volts. So by all means, you should have zero leakage at 50 volts. Let's see what happens. And look at that. See how the eye is not opening back up at 50 volts? That indicates this capacitor is super leaky and it is defective. So that's if you have one of these machines, which are very nice to have. Now back to the subject of this video, which is, how do you make a tester if you don't have one of those? Well, you can do it with some simple bench equipment. Up here I have my Heathkit regulated DC power supply that goes from 0 to 400 volts DC. Right here I have my RCA vacuum tube voltmeter. This is a volt ohmist. This meter, basically I'm just using it as a DC voltmeter. And that's all you really need to do this test. Now let me explain what I have set up. I have the power supply turned down, I have the positive lead of the power supply coming out and it's going down on my bench right here. So this is our positive connection. The negative of the supply is going to the negative of the DC voltmeter. The lead on the DC voltmeter is also out on my bench. Now what I do for this test is I simply just hook up the power supply to one side of the capacitor and then I hook up the DC voltmeter to the other side like this. So we're feeding DC into one side of the capacitor like it would be in a circuit and we're going to be using the voltmeter to measure the leakage voltage through the other side of the capacitor. Keep in mind that a capacitor is designed to block direct current from coming out the other side and pass AC current. So looking at the meter I'm going to show you both meters when I do this test. So this meter here is going to measure our leakage voltage and this meter here is going to be our output voltage that's being supplied to the capacitor. So we're going to start by turning the 
supply up slowly and you see this is acting normally. The meter is basically staying at zero. Let me zero out the meter. There we go. So as I advance the voltage, there is 100 volts. On the other side of it, zero volts. Let's make sure we can actually see these meters here. Let's get a little bit closer on this. Specifically this meter. So as I advance the voltage up, there's 200 volts, there's 300 volts, and we have zero leakage volts on the other side of the capacitor. I can see I have the supply turned up, we have the new capacitor connected, and we are measuring zero volts of leakage. That is good. That indicates that this new capacitor is not passing any DC through the other side. We will now turn our power supply down to zero, allow the capacitor to discharge, and now I will show you connecting the old capacitor in the circuit. So let's remove the new capacitor and now I'm going to take the old capacitor which was shown to be leaky on the other tester and we're going to hook it up. Okay, the old capacitor is now connected to our test jig. So we're going to start advancing the voltage up here and while I'm advancing the voltage, I'm going to see if I can get you a good shot of the leakage meter. So there's the leakage meter right there, so I'm going to go up. Here we go. There's 50 volts, and already we have some leakage. So this is showing the capacitor is defective. We have 50 volts going into one side. We have should have no voltage coming out the other side, but on this meter here, we're on the 500 volt scale, and this capacitor is showing to be almost shorted because we're getting about 48 volts on the other side of this capacitor. So this capacitor is very leaky. Let's take it up to 100 volts. We have 100 volts of DC going into one side and we have about 98 volts or so coming out the other side. And you can see as I turn this up the leakage is pretty much almost consistent with the supply voltage. There's about 420 volts and there's about 350 volts leaking through it. So I'm turning the voltage back down to zero. And that's really about it. I just wanted to give a demonstration of how you can build your own leakage tester. All you need is a high voltage source, whether it be a variable DC power supply or a fixed output such as a transformer. But I'd say if you want to do this correctly, the best thing to do is to have one of these variable DC power supplies and then you can just use a regular multimeter or any DC voltmeter to connect to the other side. So what you're doing is you're just feeding voltage into one side and you're measuring the voltage on the other side and that in a nutshell is all that machine over there really does. This machine also of course measures the actual capacitance value of the capacitor but when you're working on vintage electronics the most important thing is going to be your leakage voltage because you don't want to leave a leaky capacitor in a vulnerable position such as a coupling capacitor to the control grid of an output tube because if that capacitor is leaky and it's dumping positive bias on the control grid of that tube you're going to bias the tube on too hard and you're going to burn it up so that's why leakage is the most important thing when you're working with this old equipment so that shows you an alternative if you don't have one of these fancy leakage testers you can just build your own so I hope this video helps some of you and uh, that also allows you to go through your capacitors and see which ones you have that might be leaky. So that's really all I have for you today. I just wanted to share that uh, little bit of information with you because it's very simple to make your own and uh, most people probably have the equipment in their shop already to construct this when they need it. Or you could even mount all this in a custom enclosure and build your own. But that's all up to you. So. Again, I hope you found this useful. If you did, please comment below, like, subscribe, and uh, thank you guys very much for watching, and look out for future content in the future. I appreciate all the subscriptions I get, all the nice comments I get, and anybody that learns something, even a little bit, from one of my videos. So, thank you guys very much, and have a great day.